the very simple thing you do, if I can get just a little bit detailed for a second here, because people never hear this, and I think it's really, really important to understand why string theory is so popular. If you want to invent a new quantum mechanical theory of the world, the first thing you do is you ask yourself, if I have two particles and they come together and scatter, there's a probability that different things will happen. I'm going to make photons, I'm going to make electrons and positrons or whatever, and you calculate that probability. And the famous triumph of mid 20th century physics was to show that you can do that and get a finite answer. If you're sloppy about it, your answer turns out to be infinity and your, and your theory is on the wrong track. Everything that we know about in the physical world has a nice finite answer in this quantum mechanical realm, except for gravity. Gravity doesn't fit. And indeed, it was recognized pretty quickly that there was a good reason why gravity doesn't fit, and it was almost impossible to imagine fitting gravity in, namely that gravity interacts with everything. Gravity interacts with photons, with electrons, with quarks, with whatever. And so when you do this scattering experiment, you do the calculation, everything in the universe contributes to the infinitely big answer that you don't want to get. Apparently, what you would need is some kind of miraculous cancellation between all the different contributions from all the different fields. And people looked at that and said, we have no idea how to make that happen. Let's not worry about quantum gravity. And then string theory comes along. And again, it wasn't even trying to be a theory of gravity. But when they do this calculation, the miraculous cancellation happens in string theory. You get a finite answer to what happens when you scatter different particles off of each other.